that I think would have a much greater impact and appeal to people if it's good stuff, you know, and I've been writing for years. I mean, so I'm thinking about dumping, I mean, I hate to go in debt, but I'm thinking about finishing my little collection to where I have uh, a full studio. And then, you know, the only thing I really need is a, I don't know if you're familiar with Helix, the guitar processor. Yeah. Um, just something like that, that I can, uh, that has all the modeling and the amps and everything built in. So you can just, you don't need anything. You don't even need to mic it to record it, you know? So I've got the program. I've got my keyboard right here, my MIDI keyboard. I've got all the shit I could possibly need, except a really good, uh, you know, processing like that, that has all the bells and whistles. So I'm thinking about, thinking about, that's, I think, I mean, I gave up music to do this pretty much. And I, I really want to get back to it, and especially now with the wisdom, the, I want the wisdom, you know, when you start forgetting details and you just know things because you once knew the details, that's wisdom. <laughs> and you can't really say the details anymore, you know? That sounds great, actually, because then you can bring some joy into your work. <laughs> well, plus, I mean, there's so many people out there like yourself. Sholly in 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 uh, Philly is fantastic guitar player. I'm a songwriter myself, so I'm I don't say I'm a great guitarist, but I can sure write a song. And I I'm a sound designer post post production. So give me the song once it's done, I can make it sound wonderful once it's done. You know, and so it's like all the talent I I think about all out there. What a great way to get people together. Now you can even do it digitally, you know? So. Yeah, actually, I was so interested in this as a tangent that I just did a rolling start on our episode here. So uh, to introduce Clint real quick, we'll kind of get to that. But he's Clint, you've been here with us a couple of times in some of the most amazing episodes. So what I'm thinking, though, about you getting into music is how in a few years I'd like to see you performing at some because here's what I think about music that has a huge power is that it can draw a crowd and you can have multiple. It doesn't even have to be all protest music, just music that actually has feeling and emotion to it as well. Something that's not about uh, my dog left and my wife cheated on me and my truck broke down and I'm going to go hunting or whatever. <laughs> like, And of course, rap music, as you were talking about before I hit the recording, you know, we all see what mainstream music has been reduced to and yeah, yeah you could draw a crowd it, it could, could be other things there like what i love about some festivals i've been to is they'll have permaculture courses and yoga instruction and the gamut of things that are really good things and then on top of that the music that's there is drawing the crowd so there's so much synergy if we're actually bringing our the creativity that brings us joy to the table and not just the not just the knowledge and the wisdom, but kind of marrying those two things together has a huge impact on an open mind that might wander into it without a lot of, you know, experience in one thing or another. And what makes a really good song, in, in my opinion, is one that means something different to each person who listens to it. And then you can, of course, take part of it and say, what does he mean when he says that? What, what is that referring to? Right. If I mention, say, Icarus in a song, what is Icarus? Who's Icarus? What, what, what does that mean? To, you know, that kind of thing. Um, I, I think and, and, you know, imagine people actually speaking about a, a, the lyrics of a song instead of just, you know, the <laughs> instead of just uh, basically bobbing your head like a bobblehead and not getting anything from the music. Even I mean, some of this rap music is it's so well done done its genre but it's just it doesn't do anything to me here it's just it's just like you know it's like taking something i say pressing you know fast forward or or you know you're you're playing it faster and putting a beat on it but it doesn't really and it rhymes but it doesn't do anything to the soul in my personal experience maybe, maybe other people have have a different opinion there or a different feeling but it just doesn't do anything for me and that's what i think is really missing is um 
it's like the music isn't experiential anymore. In other words, you're not you're not singing from experience. You're not singing from the heart. You just you're trying to rhyme or you're trying to do something that just it just doesn't elevate, you know. And that's what I think is really, really, really missing. And uh, I think it would benefit the you know what again what do you call it the alternative side of of things people who are at least aware of what's going on i think it would benefit us all if there were some good bands out there that were you know the old school playing gigs and you know i mean at this point you could set up with battery power in a park or someone's land right you don't need permission to to congregate or to assemble you just need private land and you know, kind of like they used to set up those old, uh, yeah, I don't know if you ever seen Elmer Gantry or any of those, you know, you've seen those old revival type of, uh, uh, the, the evangelists would go, they'd set up a big circus tent and they'd, they'd preach, right? Wouldn't that be awesome to do with us? A traveling freaking tent show, a big circus tent. You don't, again, all you need is someone willing to allow people on their land, like Woodstock, for instance, right? Like anything, you don't have to follow. You don't have to hire a union guy for your sound, and you don't have to do all this. You, The technology has caught up to the point where you don't need all that anymore, and that's what I'm talking about to where what I do in my studio I can reproduce because it's the same exact sound coming out of my uh, effects processor or my keyboard or whatever, my vocals. And man, I just really feel like that's the, if we don't go in that direction into a more artistic direction, like you said, then we're just gonna, we're just gonna pretty much die out where it's because it's just noise at this point. We're just talking over and over and there's nothing happening. That's been my biggest complaint. My biggest pet peeve about this whole thing is that we're, we're a group that talks a lot, but over the years, I've not seen anything done about it. Just like when something's reported on the news, I don't see any action happening. Just, Hey, he should be impeached or, Hey, he should be in trouble or, Hey, but nothing ever happens. No one ever gets in trouble. No one's no one knows enough about the legal system to sue or to, you know, create a dossier. You know, nine 11 is a good example. You can't just turn in a bunch of YouTube videos to, you know, third hand evidence to the FBI and expect them to, you know, you know, you have to create a first hand, uh, uh, documentary evidence that has a chain of custody and a chain of evidence and all the follow all the rules of court procedure. And then you might actually get somewhere, but we think that by talking about it and not doing anything about it, never going to court, that something's actually going to get done. And it just, <laughs> I guess I'm tired of, it. I guess, I guess I've done it long enough now that I, you, you, you just, you know, nothing's going to change unless we change. I think, into a more artistic you know i don't know what the right word is but you get i think you're getting what i'm saying we have to put something more into this and i think music has proven itself to be an extremely powerful tool when there's some sense of freedom attached to and some sense of artistic freedom you know i don't know it's hard to hard to put it into words which is why i love music (laughs) <laughs> I totally agree, my man. I, when I have the support that I've got money to invest into things, I'm going to be creating events like this. It, one of the issues with our community that causes us not to congeal too is disagreements over things that we don't need to actually be antagonistic to each other just because we disagree about it. Like the, just right now, this weekend, um, whatever day today is the 26th or something. Yeah. There's an, in North Carolina, an Equinox festival that is totally geared towards truthers, but some people might not go to it because the organizers are in the flat earth camp. But that doesn't mean there are going to be people there. They're going to have information about all kinds of incredible modalities. And I know uh, my friend Jason Langren of Secrets, and, Secrets of Saturn and Crow 777, he has an actual band that will be performing there. So, And then there's all kinds of underground uh, occurrences of this with like 
the uh, sort of nomadic rainbow tribes of North America that have secret su- sort of secret get togethers on private land throughout the year and kind of like traveling gypsy caravans. But I do think that that's the direction because what you're, I think what you're hitting on is that music has the, and, and art has the ability to initiate a flow state. So whenever people get on podcasts and we're just kind of regurgitating facts and information back and forth, there's a, there's a little bit of a mechanistic left brain bent to that that doesn't always engage the flow state in someone listening or even in the people having the conversation. And that's the one of the best ways to feel freedom is to be in a flow state, whether it's while you're playing guitar or painting a picture or, or uh, dancing in front of the stage, whatever the case may be. Those flow states give us a really good energy that then gets kind of associated with whatever's around and whatever what we are doing with the flow state. So we can, we can form much tighter knit communities. We can share very relevant skills and information with each other through intentionally gathering more and doing more actually out in the world and not just on the internet. So well, I think the, I think totally the, right. I think the trick of it all is the same. And I'm convinced that the model that I took up years ago and continue to put forward is the model that must uh, take place, which is to keep, you know, again, you say there's a, a big, uh, uh, you know, happening, happening right now. And, you know, I've, I've held conference. I put on a great conference, but like you said, I couldn't get anybody to attend. That's the problem because, Hey, here's this guy who disagrees with this guy and this, this false paradigm and this false dialectic says, I, well, I'm not going to, I'm not put my name on the same roster as those people and da, 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 da. But see, if you kept money, if you kept commerce, which is the whole thing we're trying to get away from in the first place, believe it, you know, if you understand true freedom, you understand there's no money involved in freedom. There's no credit. There's no debt. There's no commerce. It's charity. It's love. It's forgiveness. It's all the things that we're supposed to be doing for and on behalf of each other. We're not doing that because we're so involved in commerce. We're so involved in you know, just like me, I'm saying I'm have to go in debt to acquire the 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 the, the uh, equipment that I would need to produce really good music. I, I don't want to do that, but but I mean, think about how that takes even that spiritual level. And now I'm down again because now I'm in debt. I've I haven't been in debt in my whole life because I understood it at a young age. I understood it was designed to enslave. So I have to take my spirit down the level in order to possibly bring it back up and sell records. Well, I say, no, I say, I say, I'm going to do exactly what I do with all of my work. You got to make a choice. I think you got to say, what's the point? What's the purpose behind your work? What's the purpose? What's the intent? Is it to make money? Is it to make a profit? Is it to copyright it? Is it to say no one else can play my music? Unless you get my permission, is it, or is it, I want people to hear my music. Therefore, I'm going to say, look, it's free. You don't owe me anything. If it brings joy and happiness, maybe enlightens you. Maybe it does something for you. Great. You want to, you want to pass some money my way? Great. But there's no obligation. You don't have to do that. That's not the point behind the music. So I'm sitting here going, would I rather give it away free? have no royalties attached to it, wouldn't really even need a copyright because it's self-evident. It's already out there. Uh, just a poor man's copyright, right? And your <laughs> is your point to get your music heard or is it to make money off of a product? Have you, in fact, killed your song by copywriting it and doing this and doing that? Or would it be better to say, hey, this song, do with it what you will. Remake it, whatever you want to do. Get it out there. Let people hear it. Give them them the music. Play it at cover band shows. Play it. Hey, here's an idea. Why won't radios, you know, radio stations used used to go to a radio station, give them your demo, and they'd play it, and they'd make it into a hit. Why don't they do that anymore? 
because of all the royalties and everything that's attached to it. What if I went to a radio station and I said, look, this is public domain, purely, absolutely, 100% free. Uh, if you like it, play it. You don't owe me anything. I don't owe you anything. It's just it's just a, an exchange of love. Could that change things? Could that, if we stopped attaching everything that is important to us and that, that makes us feel to the monetary system, which is obviously you don't own your money. You know, none, none, the money in your pocket is not yours. It's property of government. They can take it at any time. It's There's nothing substantial, nothing permanent about money. So if we bypass that and we started having these open concerts, I could set up in a field, my, ge- my battery-powered silent generator will power my amp, and the drums don't need a, a power, and the you know the same thing can go through the singer can go through my amp and maybe a, wouldn't that be fantastic just to put on a free and when i say free i don't just mean monetarily free i mean woodstock kind of free that kind of freedom if you will that that we ha- we don't that's what we're looking for. In other words, we're doing what it is that we're looking for, which is to freely assemble, to be not bound by any, uh, you know, again, unions and all the rules and everything, to be on private land. Someone, some, so, so. In other words, you, you know, you can't, uh, you're not renting out a venue, or you're not. You're, there's no money involved whatsoever. So everything is charitable. Everything. No, you know, you want to set up a booth, great, information only, no no commerce. Can you imagine how that would feel, how that would be? No pressure, no things to buy. Sure, you can hand out cards and say that, you know, my book or my my product or whatever. But imagine a place that's purely there for you to love one another, to experience the music, to actually be able to, for just a moment, exist outside of the matrix, outside of the system. I think that is worth a million dollars. I think it's worth that one moment of just feeling like you're with like-minded people and free. Now, I don't mean equinox or my my conference was called axiom because that's you know self-evident truth or this and meanwhile here we're going to sell you this and we're going to sell you this no i mean true freedom and there's like i said money is not involved in freedom <laughs> it's just i'm sorry but that's what we have to start turning to because the only way you're going to get a, away from this system out of the matrix is to stop using its main product, which is its money, its currency. If you don't do that, if you don't feel like you can do that, you might as well make your home, make your nest and profit and pay your taxes and do everything else. But if you're really looking for freedom, you know, you have to leave it. You have to leave that Babylonian structure. I'm sorry. That's is it's really self-evident once you, once you, get to the point where you understand that everything is designed to keep you in the system, you know? So I don't know, maybe I'm, maybe I'm sounding like a hippie or something, but (laughs) I I just, I don't see any other options for us. It's either we revolt and probably get killed or we practice peace and love and charity. And therefore the law can't touch us. Because the law can't touch those things. That's the whole point. The law does not touch moral action. It, 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 you have to act immorally in order to be under the law. The law is for criminals. We're all criminals, institutionalized. We don't even realize it. So that's my take on the on the situation. Revolution. <laughs> uh, I hope that somebody out there can give you. What's up, YouTube people? You may have noticed this wasn't a full episode. That's because we really probably shouldn't talk about the things on YouTube here that could get us kicked off. I hate the idea of self-censorship, so I don't really look at this that way. Actually, what it is is I'm trying to direct you over to my new Rockfin page, rokfin.com slash interverse, and from there you will be able to see the full free version of this episode where we talk about the stuff YouTube is just going to 
potentially pull off of their platform anyway. And I recommend it because Clint is a deep researcher who has a lot of expertise on these subjects. And even though we spent the first almost 20 minutes talking about music, which you heard here, there's a lot that we covered in the following 50 minutes of the free show. And for subscribers on Rockfin, you will be able to get an, oh my gosh, the second part of the conversation was nearly two hours. I think it clocked in at about an hour and 40. So head over to Rockfin, either get yourself the uh, about 70 minute free interview or the 70 plus an hour and a half uh, second hour. So second hour, second two hours, really. It's a huge show. Catch it on Rockfin and I'll see you there. Why are you even on YouTube anyway? This place is getting old. <laughs> All right. Bye bye.